Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's lesson where we are introducing basic flow sheeting using ChemCAD. In today's lesson we will cover the following. We will first take a quick tour around the ChemCAD uh, workspace and uh, once we have concluded that and we have looked at all the, the uh, functionalities uh, within the workspace we will then start to build a simple flow sheet just to give you a feel of the procedure that you will have to get accustomed to when developing uh, simulation models in ChemCAD. Uh, we will then further specify uh, process and model parameters uh, of the flow sheet that we have developed. And then um, once that uh, is done, we will then run the, uh, the model simulation we will then further uh, view the simulation results. To conclude, we will then save the simulation and that will be the end of today's lesson. When you start CamCat, you will land on a workspace screen with a, a number of window panes such as uh, this, uh, particularly when you have not done any customization. Uh, this workspace is uh, customizable, which means that you can move any of the palettes and uh, windows around your workspace as you may prefer, or even customize the orientation and behavior when you move the mouse over the items. The same can also be done with uh, the menus and the shortcuts at the top uh, here. Okay, starting with uh, the left hand side, on the left hand side here you have a uh, uh, CamCAD Model Explorer, uh, CamCAD Explorer, which helps you to navigate around your model files and uh, model components. Uh, if you look at the bottom, uh, you will see that you have a number of tabs uh, that you can use to explore and navigate around uh, CamCAD. Uh, the first of which is uh, the recent file uh, used which helps you to navigate around recently used files. Uh, since this is a new installation, there are no previously uh, used files. The next tab is the simulation tab. Uh, the Explorer will automatically switch onto this tab um, once you start doing uh, some work on your model. As you can see, it has a tree structure for the different parts of uh, the model, such as uh, chemical compounds, uh, thermodynamics, uh, the flow sheet, uh, data maps, and so forth. Um, you can make uh, this uh, icon smaller if you prefer, uh, in such a way that it then you can uh, shrink uh, the space to be smaller so that uh, you have uh, more space on your workspace here as you will see when we start working on ChemCAD that this uh, flow sheet workspace is the most important space and you would require the most space uh, in this tab. Okay, the last tab is the Visual Basic tab uh, which uh, essentially is a tab for advanced modeling when you start programming your own custom models that are not available in CanCAD, so to speak. Say uh, you have a, a specific uh, reactor such as a, a slurry bed reactor, which uh, uh, is not an inbuilt model uh, in CanCAD. You can use Visual Basic uh, to um, program your model, or you can use Visual Basic to call a DLL of a model that is programmed uh, in other programming languages such as Delphi, Fortran, or even MATLAB. Right here uh, on the bottom of the screen, you have um, a window that has a number of tabs. Um, the first one being the errors and warning tab. The errors and warning tab is used by ChemCAD to convey the feedback messages such as warnings and errors encountered uh, during the simulation uh, back to the user. For example, if there is uh, some specification missing or some over specification on a certain uh, unit uh, operation 
or just when the calculation did not converge uh, to give uh, a solution. The run trace tab allows the user to go through the various stages of the history of the simulation as the calculation is performed. The notes tab uh, is the user notes that the user writes to keep the, the notes about the model. For example, uh, that could be assumptions made would be recorded in here. Uh, this is uh, very useful when you revisit your model uh, after quite some time and trying to understand uh, what did you do when you were going uh, uh, when you were doing the model or oh, also when you are going to share your model with co-workers the nose tab can uh, actually convey some of uh, the, your, your, your nose to, to help them understand uh, the, 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 the model the nose that you write here would be quite helpful uh, when you uh, at the end of uh, the modeling exercise and when you are writing the report I find this uh, uh, the notes to be quite useful so that I can refer back and then uh, complete the model report uh, the next uh, workspace window pane is the unit ops palette here you have uh, all the unit operations that have been modeled in ChemCAD, such as uh, uh, reactors, um, heat exchangers, separators, piping and flow streams, uh, streams connectors, drawing symbols, and many other components that you will use to build the, the process simulation. At the top of all the tabs, you have a tab uh, containing um, a group of all unit ops that are in ChemCAD. Here in all the unit ops are shown. As you can see, you have uh, some drawing tools such as rectangles, ellipses, lines and other shapes that you can use to group your flow sheet items, maybe to indicate specific sections of the process. You also have a, a, a text uh, item that you can use to uh, include text comments, uh, state assumptions, or describe uh, describe whatever information that you want you may deem necessary for uh, for your model. Here you also have a stream connector, which you use to connect the streams between different uh, unit operations and indicate flow of material from one unit to another. You also have some um, general processing uh, units such as uh, heat exchangers. Uh, where is the heat exchanger? Heat exchangers. You have pumps. Um, you have valves, and uh, also you have a, a feed and a product uh, item, uh, which are not necessarily unit operations, but are the blocks which one can use to introduce material into the simulation and remove material uh, from the simulation. Uh, the feed and uh, product units form the boundaries of mass balance in uh, a ChemCAD flow sheet. Uh, as mass is introduced into the system using the, the feed unit, and then it is removed uh, using the, the product block. Speaking under corrections, I think that um, mass can only be introduced or removed uh, from ChemCAD using those uh, two uh, units. The second tab, we have uh, old ChemCAD 5 symbols which used to be color coded. The subsequent tabs provide the grouping uh, of unit ops uh, into tabs and categories. Uh, you can see the next tab uh, is a drawing symbol category which comprises the symbols that you can use uh, to draw non-unit uh, operation blocks on the flow sheet. Then you have the heat exchanger category, um, miscellaneous category, uh, piping and flow, reactors, separators, solids handling category as well. At the top of the palette, there is a space. Uh, there is a space to allow you to uh, search 
a unit op within uh, the collection of all the unit ops you can search for a keyword say you can search for a keyword hit Uh, where all the unit operations with uh, that keyword or that perform hit transfer operation will be listed as you can see here all types of heaters coolers and heat exchangers are shown as you can see um, heat exchanger 11 uh, 12 uh, 13 actually is uh, 12 13 and 14 are actually not heat exchangers but cooling towers at the top here uh, of the unit ops palette, you have a push pin, which allows you to change the display behavior of the unit ops palette. Um, in this current position, the palette is fixed and pinned to the workspace window. As you can see, is uh, is is attached to the main application window. If you click the push pin, the palette becomes uh, now into. Uh, auto hide mode if you move the mouse away uh, the palette disappears and when you move the mouse over the right hand edge the palette uh, appears again this is one of my favorite tweaks as it uh, removes the palette to allow me more workspace on the flow sheet modeling uh, window here and it uh, it brings the the palette uh, whenever I need it uh, easier you will see that the palette is only necessary when you are building the flow sheet and uh, later on as you continue to work on the complete model you hardly get to use it or you only need to use it when you add or change uh, some unit operation on your flow sheet other customization uh, customizations include completely removing the panes by clicking uh, the X on the top right hand corner here uh, which uh, takes the 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 paint is completely off the the workspace and you can bring the 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 paint back on onto the workspace by using uh the the toolbar format tool uh in the in the in the, in the menus as you can see you can come to the view and then you can uh, bring back the explorer and uh, that allows you to to bring back whatever tool that you have uh, uh, a paint that you have removed you can also undock uh, the, the 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 panes by moving them away from uh, from from the from the window and making them uh, into floating mode, uh, where they are now just uh, floating in space. And or you can dock them back or into whichever uh, space that you want to on your CamCat window. In case you want a bigger horizontal working space for your model, you can uh, dock them. The, the the chemcat explorer at the bottom as i have done or you can uh, take it back onto uh, the space as earlier on oh, this is where you take it. okay the status bar is down here at the bottom of uh, the application uh, window which conveys the status of the simulation as you can see now is indicating steady state uh, later on you will see that as you continue to define your model you will have your thermodynamic method uh, used also uh, conveyed here uh, or communicated here in the status bar a thermodynamic model is essentially the method that you will be using to calculate uh, uh, things like the k value also when we do dynamic simulation the status uh, of the simulation such as time and time steps will be conveyed on the status bar at the top we have uh, a toolbar with shortcut keys uh, as you can see we have a uh, uh, co uh, select components uh, shortcut uh, thermodynamics uh, setting shortcut and uh, the run shortcut we can uh, see that this is a component shortcut by either moving the mouse over it and uh, uh, seeing that pop-up uh, 
description telling you what that shortcut is doing uh, this can also be this this commands can also be accessed in the command menu um, as you can see the thermophysical allows you to select uh, components and then uh, also the to do the thermodynamic setting as you can see again this emblems uh, these icons are similar to these ones and uh, if you come back to the simulation you will notice that they uh, also have the same uh, uh, icons as these which means that you have more than one way of uh, uh, performing these tasks you can use the shortcuts you can use the toolbar or you can use the 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 tree structure in the camcat model explorer the toolbar menus are similar to a uh, common windows application the file menu here deals with uh, uh, applications such as opening opening files closing files and saving files the edit menu allows you to access uh, edit commands such as copy paste cut undo redo the view menu which we have already seen has to do with viewing application window panes and toolbars zoom options uh, grid options etc furthermore there is a flow sheet setting that has to do with viewing options of the flow sheet such as showing streams and equipment IDs, names, etc. All this will become clearer once we start doing the flow sheet uh, work in the next uh, few lessons. In the format menu, uh, we have standard format menus for graphics and text such as fill pattern, lines, line styles, fonts, colors, alignment of blocks, uh, bring to front, send to back commands. The most important item I would like to highlight and spend some time on here is uh, the engineering uh, units uh, command. Here we can specify which ever units you want to use in the simulation either to enter the information perform calculations or reporting the results right now chemcat is using uh default some default units which are uh is states that it's english units however we usually use uh si units which si units which you can select by either using common si or formal si let's uh go with common si for now as you can see now, the, 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 the common SI has been selected. And if you go with the formal SI, the formal SI has been selected. This is not the only way where you can select the units. It does not end here, as you can also uh, change the units uh, that uh, to, to, to be specific to your uh, simulation. As you can see, thickness is in meters. And if you're dealing with, uh, with pipes, uh, I usually prefer to specify my thickness in millimeters and then uh, also the diameter in millimeters and then if you look at the mass mole quantities is in kilomole and sometimes when you're dealing with flows kilomole does not uh, really give you um, a physical uh, conceptual understanding so you can change this to kilogram um, once you have done this you can click ok and the, the simulation that you are working on will use this set of units uh, if you have a specific set of units that you keep using time and time when you use chemcat you can save that sort of that, that set of units uh, as in this case uh, the units that we have selected you can uh, uh, save them as a say VUT unit and then you can save the profile and every single time when you load chemcat you come here you can come in here and load the VUT profile however if you are certain that um, you always use one set of units you can save that unit as a as a default that gets loaded every single time uh, when chemcat is uh, started by clicking the save uh, default uh, settings here and then every single time uh, chemcat is loaded you 
you will have uh, those units that you have specified uh, loaded as default uh, units. Uh, what I like about this the, the, the profiling of units is in a situation where you have different um, uh, plans or business units that use uh, different units, you can uh, create a profile for each of those uh, for each of those uh, business units and then every single time you run a simulation or you develop uh, a model for that um, business unit you can then uh, use uh, you can then load the profile for that particular unit as you can see you can have many profiles not just uh, VUT in this regard next we have uh, the thermophysical menu here, this is where we can specify uh, chemical components. Uh, as you can see in the select components uh, uh, tab here, you have uh, components that uh, ChemCAD has. And then um, you can further select uh, thermodynamics uh, settings, which uh, essentially uh, gives you the thermodynamic property calculation methods that you would uh, be using for your simulation. If you look at um, uh, a simulation model, it consists of three components. The first component will be uh, the flow sheet that you have built uh, using uh, unit operations and um, stream connectors. And then the second component will be uh, uh, the chemical components that you have stated uh, which basically uh, specify the chemistry and then the third part will be the thermodynamic methods which uh, 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 specifies the method for performing uh, calculations of uh, parameters such as phase equilibrium k-values the specifications uh, menu is used to specify things like uh, feed streams compositions and uh, cut streams. The run menu allows the commands for calculation settings such as conversions, which loosely speaking deals with uh, the accuracy of, uh, of, of the calculations. And then the run controls uh, how the calculation is executed you can run the entire flow sheet uh, by clicking run all here or you can run uh, selected uh, unit ops one at a time and then you can also um, um, do some sensitivity of optimizations and uh, data reconciliation the report menu deals with how you want your results to be reported back to you once the calculations have been performed and then uh, the plot menu allows you to graphically see some of your results uh, of your calculations of or that of physical and thermodynamic uh, data in graphical presentation. As you can see, you can plot TPX diagrams, residue curves, and uh, in the unit of plots here, you can uh, plot column profiles, uh, heat curves, plug flow reactor profiles, and so forth. The sizing menu allows you to perform design specifications and sizing of various unit operations such as distillation columns, heat exchangers, and control valves. The tools menu here um, gives you access to tools to perform economic analysis, costing calculations, regression, and data maps linking uh, your simulation to Excel, which is a very powerful uh, way to uh, analyze your data using Microsoft Excel. The two tools that I will highlight at this point is um, the simple calculator which allows you to do simple calculations uh, within uh, uh, ChemCAT. You can expand this to scientific calculation, uh, programmer calculation and other um, Options include uh, the programmer calculator and the statistics calculator. Uh, the second tool is the units uh, conversion tool, which allows you to um, perform conversion of units quickly. As you can see here, you can choose uh, any quantity or parameter 
um, say here we you can choose uh, the area quantity the velocity or you can choose a, a parameter such as viscosity and then you can enter uh, the, quant uh, the the parameter in one set of value say one centipoise and then uh, chemcat uh, uh, pressing enter chemcat will convert that into uh, a numerous uh, sets of units for you okay uh, just before we proceed I just want to show you that uh, there's two tools that you have looked at they have uh, the keyboard uh, shortcuts F6 for the units calculator and uh, the F7 for the sample calculator which uh, 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 gives you the sample calculator, a scientific calculator, programmable calculator and the statistics calculator. The last two menu options that we have in here we have the window menu which essentially is uh, the standard window, uh, Windows application uh, menu which has to deal with how the windows are, are viewed and how they are tiled. The last menu is the help menu which will now take you to the help topics for, for ChemCat which we will be referring to time and again when we are building the simulation and in the later stage. Generally speaking, when you are building a simulation model, you will start working on the menus from uh, left to right. Uh, for example, you will start on the format uh, menu where you will select the engineering units that you will be using for your calculations and reports. Uh, and then you will move on to the thermophysical uh, menu where you will select your, your components and then further go into the thermodynamics uh, settings where you will select your thermodynamic method uh, just to give you a feel of what we have in here you have um, uh, quite a number of thermodynamic uh, methods that you can use to calculate your k value for your uh, equilibria for your phase equilibria and then you have uh, the enthalpy model also you have a number of uh, enthalpy models that you can use to calculate your your enthalpy and then you have your physical uh, property transport properties here which you can use uh, which we will be looking at one uh, when we are using the simulation the the next uh, you will now move on to the specification where you will be specifying your feed streams and then uh, once your flow sheet is complete and the specifications and the calculations methods are completed then you will run your simulation and then next you will go into the report to see the results that you have uh, created okay uh, as we have uh, we have stated earlier on the plot sizing and tools uh, menus can be used at any time uh, w uh, when you are either building your simulation model or just before you run it or at the end of the run to plot the results uh, of, of your of your model I think this now brings us to the conclusion of uh, the ChemCat workspace uh, walkabout uh, without building any simulation model at this point you should be eager to start experimenting with ChemCat I will continue to highlight other features and tweaks as we work on ChemCat in the next lessons